Welcome to Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. I'm Evan Green, I'm the firearms historian here at the museum. And since oh, about 2015, I've been going through the inventory of firearms in the museum's permanent collection and making some videos to share with you about guns that I find unique, interesting, that have a Wyoming story. So what do we have today? We have a German World War I machine gun. And obviously it's incomplete. You can look at the image in this video and see that when it was actually in use, it would have been mounted on a carriage with wheels and a tail so that it could traverse. Uh, side to side and up and down. So this one has a cool stamp on the top. It's got a serial number, uh, MG08, machine gun 08, uh, which is the model. And he, though we refer to it as a Maxim, it was not manufactured by the Maxim company. And then it has DWM, Berlin, 1918. So I find it just incredible that Hiram Maxim patented a machine gun like this in 1884, 20 years after the Civil War was shot with muzzle-loading muskets, we had a fully automatic machine gun. Those muskets with a, with a competent User could get off two or three shots a minute. Maxim's gun had a fire rate of 600 rounds a minute. Incredible, incredible. So it's water-cooled. There's a fill plug here, so you can fill this reservoir that surrounds the barrel. Uh, so that when you're using it, the barrel doesn't overheat, which was a problem with other machine guns that were developed later that were basically air-cooled. You had to switch out the barrels or cool that barrel some way. This uh, reservoir kept that barrel cool while the machine gun was in use. There's, when I, Looking at this, it was an interesting story because the British version of this was called a Vickers. Myram, Hiram Maxim uh, joined up with the Vickers company and manufactured machine guns for the British Army. But if you've read any British history, you know how important tea is to the Brits. There's stories that some British soldiers would... Uh, fire their machine guns to heat water for tea. That may be an apocryphal story and a joke on the Brits, I don't know. Anyway, this is an interesting, interesting machine gun. Got an adjustable sight here that folds down. I think, which way does it fold? There we go. Um, it was belt fed, so you had linked cartridges in a canvas belt that fed through this aperture here and it was activated with this handle which rotated the bolt and fed the first cartridge into the chamber and at that point you could grab these handles push off the safety push the trigger down and it would fire until you released the trigger or ran out of ammunition what i thought was interesting is that you would maybe expect the fired cartridges to be ejected out this side. Nope, they were ejected out this hole in the front of the gun. So how did we end up with this? This was donated originally after World War I, where these machine guns uh, saw a tremendous amount of use. Uh, anyway, donated to... Uh, the American Legion post number six here in Cheyenne. They subsequently gave it to the museum in 1927. So let's look at the back end of this and kind of show how it works. So 
this is the safety right here. So you're going to push that to the side, which disengages the safety. And then with the safety disengaged, you can push this trigger forward. And it will fire until you release that trigger or you run out of ammunition. So again, these saw extensive use in World War I. And in fact, if you look at any of the pictures from the war in Ukraine today, both sides are still using Maxim machine guns. And it's unfortunate and very sad that these were available for World War I and in, in use because the Allied troops in particular had not adopted or realized that you couldn't send massed troops marching across two or three hundred yards of open ground into machine guns. So particularly the British troops were just wiped out at various battles in World War I by these machine guns because the people in charge did not understand that you can't refight the Napoleonic Wars if the other side has a machine gun and barbed wire. I think it may have been Winston Churchill that characterized the British armory as lions led by donkeys who sent them again repeatedly into the face of machine guns. Sad story. Interesting firearm. Hiram Maxim's machine gun, patented in 1884 and still in use today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about this gun or anything else going on in your life with firearms, feel free to put it in the comments or you can call the museum, leave a message for me, and I will get back to you.